Hello, welcome to the video. Today we're going to be talking about the GTN 650 and also the G3X. There's a lot of stuff to cover, so just skip around to whichever part you want to see. I apologize for video. Zoom in here on the EIS. This will be the first thing we cover is the Bean Assist. This is how you get to the different pages. You can either scroll through or tap right on the EIS uh, strip on the side. Okay, so we're established in good cruise speed. We're going to tap the Lean Assist button to enable it. And slowly start leaning out the mixture. What we're looking for is for one of these cylinders to turn blue. And that will be the first peak EGT. There it is. So now we're going to start enriching the mixture to be on the rich side of peak. And you'll see the rest of the cylinders turn blue as well. And this carrot here is showing your fuel flow in gallons per hour. It will also have a cyan colored carrot that's hollow to show where PTGT was. Now I'm looking at the numbers below the cylinder and looking for plus 25 for best economy from my POH. And at the fuel flow carrot here, you can see we're on the rich side of the peak. If you wanted to lean, lean a peak, that carrot would help you do that. This is showing the new glide advisor and arrow line to best airfield after the software update on my 650. The page is also scrolled horizontally now, and here's the software version. I got the 650 from a mini service center, but it was not up to date. So I highly recommend checking that and updating it to get all the features you can. Okay, now we want to set up a VNAV descent. First thing we want to do is find the elevation we want to descend to. Usually that's going to be pattern elevation, which for light airplanes is 1,000 feet AGL. Here's one way to find it. On the info page on the 650 itself, you can see the elevations 1,016 feet. The other way is on four flight here. Click on the airport. You can see it at the top. Do the math yourself, or scroll down, and the pattern estimates are listed here for you. So once we have that figured out, you can go into the flight plan, and we're going to set up the constraint for the BNAP. So it's a long track offset. Say we want to be three miles prior to the airfield we want to be at pattern altitude. You can set whatever distance you want, whatever time you need to be configured. And it creates a new point three miles before. On the altitude box, we set the altitude here. So I'm setting 2016, which is 1000 EGL. This direct VNAV button will send you direct there. Time now. We don't want to do that yet. We're still 300 miles away. So we're going to click save instead. And this message here on the 430 is just saying the GTN flight plan is not support. Mine cross fills down, and if we look at the 430 flight plan, it shows the three nautical mile point we made before, but it doesn't understand VNAV. There is a VNAV calculator, but it's independent of the flight plan in the 430. On the 650, the VNAV is tied into the flight plan and will actually fly it, which is pretty cool. To set up for the VNAV, we first have to select the lowest altitude that we want to program. In this case, 2,000 feet. 
set that with the out to preselect. That's the BNAP button we're going to press on the GFC 500 to arm BNAP. Now we should be seeing it there in the autopilot bar, a white BNAP, but we aren't. So let me know if you can figure out why before I do. CDI is a little off center. Hey, that's right, we were in heading mode, not nav mode. So now we're in nav mode, and now we can press B nav again, and we can see that it is sitting there armed. It's ready to go. Now our time to top of descent is 2 plus 0, 0.7 minutes. A couple ways to get to VNAV. From the main screen, you can go to Utilities and VNAV. Or from the Flight Plan, you can hit the Menu button and find VNAV. Now these are a couple different fields that you can edit. The first time I went in here, these were grayed out. I wasn't able to edit the target VSI or the flight path angle. It defaults to three degrees, by the way. The reason I found was in the publications, and it was because I was further than 50 miles from the descent point. Now, obviously, I'm a lot further than 50 miles right now, but since I did it the first time, it must allow me to do it. Okay, so right here I'm just showing the different fields. Right now the two on the outsides are blank because we're not actually established in the VNAV profile. Once we are actively in the descent, those would show values. And I'm going to go in here and change the BS target to 500 feet a minute. That will in turn adjust the flight path angle, but that's less important to me. So just click on it, enter the value you want, and hit save. And you see that the flight path angle has changed as well. It also adjusted the time to top descent a little bit. If we look on the map view, we can see that the point we created three miles prior to the airfield shows up along our route as an ATK, which stands for a long track. Here we can also see the extended center line of the runway we're planning to go to, runway 19. Keep that offset angle in mind. That will uh, make more sense later during a demonstration of the visual approach feature. Tapping that little airplane uh, recenters the map for you. Here's the other way to get the elevation. Just clicking on the airplane on the G or airport on the G3X. You can also tap one arrow key to the right and see the meter. Obviously, you need to double check that with what's on the radio as you get closer. So to get to the procedure, you would think you should be able to find it in the menu of the flight plan but you cannot. So you can either scroll with the knobs with the new software or hit the home button and procedure. And we got our airport already there from the flight plan. So we click approach. We're going to pick the visual one nine. Now here we're going to go over loading versus loading and activating. If we preview the approach, we can see what it creates here. Can it zoom in far? But it creates a three nautical mile visual point all the way to the runway. 
and that three nautical mile point extends backwards a little bit as well. And it has an altitude constraint 2034. Now it's not over on this uh, line on this map because we have not loaded it yet. So if we were to activate the approach right now, it would try to pick up an extended center line for runway 19. And we are currently 304 nautical miles away from the airport. It will turn you to intercept that no matter how far away you are. That's the gotcha and that's the danger of activating the visual approach this far out. Try to stay ahead of the aircraft, but not that far. This is a warning here uh, that basically tells you terrain and obstacles are your responsibility. It bases it off a three degree glide path and a threshold crossing height of 55 feet. So we activated it. It immediately turned us. You can see there with the CDI is off and it is turning towards that intercept point. And keep in mind, we're basically on a straight end. I switched it back to heading mode to keep me from getting too far off course. But it would take in the extended center line from runway 19 out to infinity, I'm sure. Um, I'm hundreds of miles away here, and it was already trying to turn towards it. You can see the active leg in the flight that was going to runway 19. So I'm going to reactivate the leg to my visual descent point that we made earlier and put it back into nav mode. So now that we're back on course, we can see the visual approach we loaded here is unhappy with this altitude as an X through the 2034. That's because the altitude constraint we set above here is lower. So the databases are conflicting. So 2034, save, and now it's happy again. So we can page over here, and I'm going to keep this up as I approach the airport, ready to activate it. So if you're interested, go watch the next video that has cockpit audio, where we actually apply the VNAV profile we made and the visual approach all the way to the runway. See you next time.